Hey guys, it's Callus. I am here with an evening of Pokemon Perfect Championship content, starting with RBY, and I'm going to have Black White later tonight, but I am very excited for this match. We have the RBY Championship for our very first tournament in my time as the leader of Pokemon Perfect. We have a best of five set here. And we've got very different players here. We've got Luna, a relatively under no, uh, unknown underdog who has gone through big names. He's gone through Ebola. He beat Kichi. He beat Altina. He's gone through some really good players to get here. And he just has one more step. I mean, he's already, by getting a minimum of second place in this tournament, no matter what happens, he's already qualified for our cash-paying RBY championship tournament at the end of the year. And you guys can get involved with that too. There'll be a link in the description for all things Pokemon Perfect. If you guys want to check it out, make some money playing Pokemon. And then on the other end, we have arguably the hottest RBY player right now. HML AM has been in the mix for everything. He made the finals of Smogon's RBY Championship, where he took a one game to none lead in a best of three, but then did drop the next two to lose to Ebola. He's in SPL right now, and to the best of my knowledge, has a positive record in that tournament. And here he is now in the finals of this tournament. He is on a hell of a run as of late, has been playing really good RBY, and he, on paper, has got to be the favorite to win the championship here. But Luna has had such a good run against very strong players, including Ebola, who beat HML AM in the Smogon Championship. So, I mean, if Luna can beat Ebola, Luna can beat this guy. I really can't wait to see how this all plays out. So, no more talk. Let's get into it. It's a best of five, so we might be in for a long set here. And here's the first game. Luna's on the bottom. HML is on the top. Advantage Jolteon lead over the Starmie. We've got a Chansey switching to an Alkazam on Executor. And we have an immediate Sleep Powder putting the Alakazam out of commission, but making it so other things, like Chansey, cannot be put to sleep. We end up with Chansey on Chansey, T-Wave, and Sing, respectively, which is going to be a swing and a miss. Lax is going to come in at this point, and it's another Sing attempt. This one is going to connect. Toro switches into Lax since it is sleeping. Gets out of the way. Here's Cloyster. Monstrous defense stat. Takes that body slam really well. Only 20%. Blizzard here with a crit on Starmie on the way in. But he then gets out of the way. Goes to Chansey. Starmie simply recovers it off. Last Pokemon for HML, even though it's not revealed, is all but certain to be Tauros. Whereas Luna so far looks to have a pretty standard team. Lax is going to be there somewhere. The last poke may or may not be Eggs. When teams opt to exclude the big four... Eggs is usually the poke that gets the boot, but it very well could just be a standard team, and it's just Eggs and Lax as the last pokes. In the meantime, HML, after some clamp shenanigans, gets out of the way. Here's a Gengar coming in, blanking a body slam, so assuming the last poke is Lax, which is all but a certainty, there will not be an executor for Luna's team, but I mean, this is the same guy who's busted out Sand Slash and other things in this tour, so he's obviously not afraid to go against the meta a little bit and use some things that he likes or that he thinks are good, even if they are not considered traditional parts of the meta. Not that Gengar is off meta per se, but it's nowhere near as popular as it used to be. It's kind of like a weird, once in a blue moon, uncommon thing in the meta. Lot of switching going on in this game. There was a sing attempt there that missed the cloister. Jolteon found its way in on Starmie thanks to a good switch for HML. That gives him a free turn to do what he wants. He offs the Thunderbolt. It connects with Chansey. Cloyster comes in, tries to trap it. We see that it is Last Poke Lax. Surprise to nobody. And the full teams are now revealed for both guys as Tauros comes into a sleeping Zam. Zam out of the way. Starmie in. Body slam. No crit, no para. And that's just going to enable Starmie to recover it off. Starmie this whole time has managed to avoid getting hit with a status move. Speaking of which, Snorlax gets hit with a status move here. Thunder Wave goes for Amnesia here. Clamp is going to miss. Body Slam is going to connect and power. Good turn there for Luna. That's going to force a rest out of HML. Body Slam 22%. Cloyster going to stay in. Lax going to be fully paralyzed. No harm, no foul. At this point, Cloyster is going to wake up. He'll be Body Slammed again, but he'll avoid paralysis. And now he's going to get the Clamp off. Now Starmie comes in. That's going to get Clamped. 
And now Alakazam comes in. That's not going to get clamped. Jolteon finds its way in, but that's been met with Chansey very consistently. This time, HML predicts that. He's going to get him for 28% with some double kicks. He'll get a crit on Thunderbolt and a para. That puts him in danger. Gengar comes in anticipating double kick, and he's correct. It's going to be immune, obviously, with that ghost typing. He'll trade Thunder Wave for Boom. Boom is going to do a lot, but it is not going to kill the Jolteon. So the first advantage due to a self-inflicted Boom is going to be a 6-5 lead for HML, who's going to again rest with his Cloister here. Starmie comes in for the punishment, but he switches to Chansey. He gets Chansey on Chansey, which has to be what he was looking for. Nice sequence there for Luna to bail his previously low Chansey out of trouble. A lot of switching in this game. Starmie shows Thunderbolt for the first time, I believe. Yes, he had not shown that before. Information gained for HML. He's got to be careful with that Cloister, knowing that he could get Thunderbolted should he try to get cute in that matchup. Blizzard happens here. Zam is low, and it is not even awake yet. Tauros here continuing the pressure. Very offensive team for HML. Jolteon and Cloister both offensive-oriented pokes, and he is keeping the pressure rolling. Thunderbolt happens again here. We know it's an Amnesia Lax. We have not seen anything other than Amnesia and Body Slam. Body Slam connects with the already paralyzed Cloister, who again simply goes for rest. We know that Thunderbolt is there. HML knows that and gets out of the way. Great double switch for Luna to get Alakazam in to try to wake his ass up, but he refuses to get out of bed. He is still sleeping despite killing another sleep turn. Starmie has avoided status all game long, and it recovers back up to 100%. We now have a chancy ditto. Nothing happening here. Both at almost full health. Lax comes into Thunderbolt. That's going to put it at 20%. It probably has rest, and it does have rest. He goes for that here. HML is going to bring Tauros in to continue the offense. Finally, Starmie comes in on the bad end of a crit, but again avoids the para, and he stays in for the recover. Starmie has been unbelievably resilient for Luna throughout the game, and it's a failed thunder wave for HML, hitting the sleeping lax. He'll kill a sleep turn on the cloister. Alakazam comes in. Finally, finally, Alakazam wakes up, as does the Cloister, but Alakazam can finally get the recover off and go back up to 87% before retreating out of the way of the Executor. It shows Double Edge, then goes Psychic, both of which are negated by the Soft Boiled, and we've got ourselves a pretty even back-and-forth game in which most everything other than the Jolteon that got exploded on is in pretty good shape health-wise right now. 88, Hundo, 87, Hundo, 82, 88, 91, Hundo, Hundo, Hundo. Very healthy Pokemon between these two players. We could be in for a long one here. 86 turns in, and most things look very far away from fainting. Like I said, the only actual knockout that we have was self-inflicted via Boom, and obviously it took its Boom recipient, the Jolteon, pretty low with it. Hacks opportunity there for HML. Should he have found a crit with a body slam or a full para, Lax would have been in trouble and maybe he breaks this game wide open. But he didn't find either and the rest did get off. However, he did finally, after many, many turns, many, many attempts, finally he finds paralysis or some status effect. It happens to be paralysis on the Starmie who finds his way in here. Double Edge going to hit him for 24%. No big deal. Recover opportunity is successful despite the paralysis. And full power kicks in as the Chansey comes in, preventing what was probably just a recover turn. Thunderbolt from Chansey on the Sleeping Lax. It becomes Chansey on Chansey. Full set not revealed, but I mean, you know the last move is going to be soft boiled, so it might as well be revealed. And we are in for a grind here. We are crossing the 100 turn mark, and we still have the one knockout only from the self-inflicted explosion. There's Clamp. Here's Jolteon. Opportunity to kill him there is missed. Had he gone for an attack there, he could have killed the Jolteon, but he did not make the prediction. However, HML did not opt to stay in with the Jolteon either. Lacks on Chansey. Thunderbolt, as the Lax is asleep, it's going to wake up here. It's going to eat an Ice Beam, a critical hit Ice Beam. However, he's going to be able to get the rest off because he is faster than the Paralyzed Chansey. And HML once again takes the opportunity to uh, fish for crits with the Tauros here. He has not been very good at that throughout the game. 
and Cloyster comes in at this point. There's the body slam, 23%. Cloyster has been walling that lax all game long. There's Clamp. Here's Alakazam. Here's Clamp again. And at this point, Chansey comes in. Cloyster obviously gets out of the way. Has no business attempting to eat psychics from Alakazam. He knows better, and he runs. Once again, body slam. And once again, the Cloyster is walling the lax. Rest for lax, and possibly for Cloyster as well. Yes, they are both going to take their nap here. And they're both going to stay in and kill a sleep turn. Both seem content. Luna switches at this point. Cloyster wakes. Chansey on Chansey. Full power. Not that he could have done anything overly exciting there. Lax on Lax. And they both killed a sleep turn. Make that two sleep turns. And here comes Cloyster against Tauros at this point. 22%. Cloyster consistently walling these physical threats. With its... Ah... Fucking sky high, astronomical, almost as big as my cock defense stat. Body slam action for both of them here. Danger of a crit for either guy. Neither player finds one. And there's the hyper beam knockout, finally getting Luna on the board. We've got ourselves a 5-5 five -five at turn 131. However, a revenge kill comes down for HML. And that's going to give him the lead again at 5-4. to four. Remember, the Jolteon is still very low, but it is also still alive. Sleep Powder going to miss on the already paralyzed Chansey. Chansey on Chansey here. Sing also going to miss. Here comes Lax. Thunder Wave going to connect with that. Cloyster comes in to once again, I've said this 15 times this game, wall the Lax. The Cloyster has been a great wall throughout the game for the Lax and for the now deceased Tauros. Or I guess Pokemon don't die. My bad, guys. The fainted Tauros. Chansey and Lax once again. A lot of switching in this late game. Very slow progress here. A lot of switching. A lot of maneuvering around. Not a whole lot of pushing the action here. But they both have to play in whatever they think is their best interest. I get it. Alakazam nailing Chansey with Psychic. Looking for a crit or a spec drop. Finds neither. Cloyster on Lax again. Body slam, crit, or power opportunity. Power would have been better. But he does not find it. And once again, the Cloyster gets a rest off. He's been so difficult to kill for Luna throughout this game. Zam finds a nice Psychic. He gets a crit and a spec drop on eggs. That's exactly what he's looking for. But neither player stays in. Neither player willing to commit to the matchup. There is a lot of late game switching going on. Cloyster finally wakes up from his nap once again. A lot of switching. And again, Cloyster comes into Lax. Blizzard here, 32%. Body Slam, 23%. This time he does find the para. Starmie comes in. We know that as Thunderbolt. So Cloyster doesn't want to stick around for that. But we know that Chansey's going to come in to the Starmie. Which is why Lax comes in. And he again gets some chip damage off. Alakazam comes in hoping that Cloyster will full power. That would be a nice break for Luna. He's giving himself a lot of opportunities for his specific sequences of hacks to occur for him. But so far they have not. And a great sequence there for Luna. He goes Psychic Specs Drop and then Psychic uh, Crit Specs Drop. Putting Chansey on the ropes here. Opportunities available. There's another critical hit and a Specs. Great Psychic there as well. Stuff getting low from HML after some really good Alakazam turns that gives him a bit of a tempo loss and he needs to catch up now. Tauros getting greedy, staying in against Starmie. It's Blizzard over prediction as opposed to Thunder Wave. Even though it's a crit, the Tauros is going to live and kill the Starmie and finally HML is starting to punch through. However, things are quite low for him. Chansey might die here. He's going to give it up. Luna gets back on the board. 4-3. to three. Jolteon here going for the throat. Thunder Wave on the already paralyzed Chansey. He's not ready to sacrifice the Jolteon. Chansey goes Ice Beam here. Last move still unknown. Doesn't appear to have Thunderbolt. Or he would have gone for that against Chansey here. Psychic is going to connect and do a lot. Cloyster comes in. Cloyster goes out. Here's Eggs. It's going to blow. It's going to get a crit on Lax. We've got a two-on-three situation. Jolteon still alive this whole time, but both Jolteon and Tauros are unbelievably low. Great double switch for HML to get the Tauros in against the Chansey. He then finds the Hyper Beam that he needs. 
Psychic is going to revenge kill the Toro, so it's going to be Cloyster and Jolteon only against the Alakazam. Thunder Wave full power at a terrible time for Luna. Thunderbolt critical hit also at a terrible time. And a full power kicks in to seal the deal. Potentially a robbery there for Luna. He could have easily just not been fully paralyzed on that very first turn. Killed the Jolteon and it would have come down to Alakazam against Cloyster. And you have got to think that in the overwhelming majority of situations, the Alakazam would have won in that 1v1. So you've got to think... I mean, I don't want to speak for the whole game because that was just 182 turns. And obviously in RBY, when the game is that long, there's a hell of a lot of things that happen over that time period. But specifically in that late game, specifically when it came down to Alakazam against the super low Jolteon and the Cloyster, the majority of the time, I'm not going to pull a number out my rear, but more often than not, the Alakazam wins in that situation, and that is not what happened here today. So HMLAM, even though I think that game maybe could have, should have gone to Luna, HMLAM is going to take the first game down. But remember, guys, this is a best of five set. Still a lot of room for either player to crush their opponent and dominate the set. We'll see if either one of them can do that. But in the meantime, leave a thumbs up, and I will see you guys for game two.